Life NYC. I'm Michelle Beadle, and I don't know if you knew this, but May is Bicycle Month here in New York. And with our ever-growing concern for the environment and those gas prices that don't seem to want to go down, it's no surprise that our city has come a long way in becoming a more bicycle-friendly community. Even I, with my little pink helmet and my turquoise bike, like to hit the road. So we decided to check out the organization that's been at the forefront of this bicycle revolution. Every day in New York City, approximately 130,000 people take a bike ride. And whether it's for transportation or exercise, it's actually a political statement of sorts, whether they know it or not. That's because there's an ongoing battle for the city streets. Cars and trucks that once ruled the road are now competing with growing numbers of cyclists who dare to brave the infamous New York traffic. It's a little bit of the wild, wild west. We want people to obey the rules, but there's a craziness in the city where there's this thing, I, mean, I guess you, if you get no respect, you give no respect. So the cycling community uh, really needs some to hear from the city. Bill De Paula is a pioneer of the cyclist movement. 21 years ago, he started a grassroots environmental group called Times Up, focusing on issues like pollution, green spaces, and sustainability. But their message fell on deaf ears. That's when Bill banded together the fragmented community that was using their bikes as a healthy, non-polluting form of transportation and made them his base. The situation in New York City, the bikers were all independent. You had people who were riding these fixed gear bicycles and these 10 speeds and these mountain bikes and, and older people and punks and yuppies, and they seemed to be very separated. And the group rides, when you're riding together, it kind of builds kind of a strength Group rides quickly gained popularity. Time's Up continued to stage rides that were fun, charitable, and often political. We have a right to be on the streets just like anybody else. They also helped to stage what is probably the most famous group ride in the world, Critical Mass. Critical Mass is really just a name. I mean, it's a group bike ride, but this particular ride has a name. The concept started in San Francisco. And the concept is there are really no leaders, no, no rules pretty much, but you should work together as a community. It usually happens the last Friday of every month, whatever city you're in, all over the world, there's really no route, there's really no leaders. People just work together and ride together. That may sound like harmless fun, but in 2005, the New York Police Department started to aggressively crack down on what they saw as a politically based march that blocked traffic without the necessary parade permit. They also saw Time's Up as a lead instigator. We're not the leaders, we're not the organizers. Uh, up and down, I've been in the court system, they say like, I'm the one in charge of it. It's crazy, ridiculous. Um, we are just a small group, a nonprofit group that believes in promoting non pollutant transportation. After winning several court battles, it looks as though Time's Up may have won over the city. The NYPD backed off of the group rides, and the current administration seems to have embraced some Time's Up philosophies. We see a lot of changes. We see the mayor talking about congestion pricing, even trying to implement it to reduce the amount of cars in the city. And he's also been doing some stuff where he hired a lot of DOT people, the commissioner, to increase uh, bicycle lanes and infrastructure. So they're starting to do some great stuff. One of the infrastructure changes advocated by Time's Up can be seen on 9th Avenue between 16th and 23rd Street. It's a change that Time's Up volunteer Judy Ross sees as a model for the future of New York streets. What you see is very different than other bicycle lanes in the city. Because right now it's a physically separated lane. This is the way it is in other European cities like Amsterdam and Copenhagen. They have a clear separation of where bikes ride and where the cars are. Time's Up volunteers help to invent and implement new forms of non-polluting transportation based on the bicycle. One example is the pedicab. Pedicabbing is a kind of safe, clean alternative to the noise and the pollution that is accumulated by the cars passing by. I mean, I live in Hell's Kitchen, and I definitely can tell you that if there were about a 1,000 less cars on the street, I'd be a happy person. And that's who Bill De Paula ultimately sees winning the battle for New York City streets, hybrid forms of transportation, some of which will be born from a bicycle revolution. The pedicabs are this great combination where they have a, a little electric motor, and you start pedaling, and then at a certain speed, the electricity takes over. Um, so there's going to be uh, kind of a, this thing from high tech to low tech, which I think is going to be great. The fact is that people don't all have to look the same or behave the same. There could be punks or yuppies, and they couldn't have fun 
and do something good for the planet. Up next, a gifted athlete defeats her friends.